You know, boys, we live in a very strange time right now. The sky is raining, snowing with ash. The rivers and oceans are running black. The sun is permanently orange. We had the littest gender reveal of all time. It's a boy, by the way. And the strange thing that happened to us over the weekend was... We got the SSG-1 by G&G. &G. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? Kevin from Airsoft GI here, covering all things Speedsoft because apparently that's all I'm good for. Uh, obviously Boaz would be the perfect candidate to review this gun, but he humbly passed on the honors to me. So I will be doing the review, taking a look at it. Now you may think that this gun is exactly what I'm looking for. It's maybe even built for me. However, stick around to the end of the video to really hear what I think about this gun. So if you've been following Airsoft News for a while, you've probably seen pictures of this guy floating around the Reddit, the Facebook group pages, uh, and you've probably thought to yourself, I didn't think I needed this, but maybe you thought I probably do need this. So G&G has released their SSG-1, which they have marketed to speed softers or paintballers transitioning to airsoft or airsofters transitioning over to paintball but can't afford paintball. So this is this nice middle ground right here. And it's very reminiscent of a paintball marker. It's pretty much a stripped down M4 without its handguard, just exposing the outer barrel, which looks like the outer barrel of a paintball marker. And let's be real, if you're coming from paintball to airsoft, you're gonna feel pretty comfortable with this. You're probably not gonna hold it like this. You're probably gonna hold it like this. So they've done a great job of marketing it to the intended audience. And if you're a Milsimer considering this, I applaud you for being a black sheep in a crowd of white sheeps. Is that the saying? Multi-cam sheep. Oh, multi-cam sheeps. So as you can tell, this guy has some very unique features. Disgusting. Unique features that step it apart from other M4s. Uh, like I said before, it does look like it's missing a handguard, but G&G has made the outer barrel a handguard. Um, and the way it screws on to this guy is there's basically an exposed barrel nut here that the entire outer barrel screws onto. So there you go, I'll just show just a little bit. Um, but yeah, this guy just screws into this and locks it in nice and tight. So I, I guess you could say it's pretty easy for maintenance or swapping if they ever decide to make this out of carbon fiber or colored outer barrels, you know, if they, if they dare be a little bit spicier with their design. But yeah, this is how it's looking, this is how it's attached, and they added a very unique comp to it. Um, there are some rail sections on the bottom and the top for who knows what. You could add a laser on the bottom if you want, a foregrip, a mini grenade launcher, and then on the top you can mount a light, um, a... What else? Peck box? Peck, peck box? You mount a peck box, you can mount a... RMR, huh? I'm spitballing here, there's there's not much you can mount there. But yeah, it has a very unique look to it. It's very bright orange. Shout out to you, g, &G for making sure that we really keep this orange tip thing going. And actually, the g, &G Tracer fits perfectly on the inside of this comp. However, you do have to buy the adapter that allows you to screw the Tracer unit in here separately, so. Just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the drop stock adapter that G&G has made for this gun. Now this guy is different from some of the other drop stock adapters out there, like the tap ones that we offer on our website, where those ones just drop it at a certain angle or a, from a certain distance. But this guy is actually fully adjustable in terms of angle. Now all you need to do is grab an Allen key. And there's a big old hex screw on the side, you just loosen that guy, and now you can actually fully adjust the angle of how you want your stock to be. And you can also adjust the uh, length of your stock as well. So if you really wanna, if you really wanna piss off people, just, there you go. Does that look good? How you like that, boys? Immaculate. Look at that. Lastly, the one part that I really love about this stock, thank you so much, Gingy, for including this feature, is the little 
extended paddle that you would need to pull to take off your stock. Now there are some slim style stocks already out on the market that feature a similar look, but the little paddle that you have to pull to take off the stock to put in a battery, they include it like as thin as a toothpick and you really have to just stab your fingers in there and just pierce your skin just to install a stupid battery. But G&G is really looking out for the players. They added some nice extended paddles. Mm. I feel so nice. I can do this all day. I'll put in and out a battery of this gun all the time. Now, if you haven't seen my video of my loadout and why I run a drop stock on my gun, uh, the purpose of this drop stock is actually so that when you're wearing a full face mask like a dye mask or any kind of paintball style mask, most people have a hard time actually cheeking their gun and getting a clean sight picture because the cheek well of your mask hits the side of the stock. Now with this drop stock adapter, it allows you to still get a nice shoulder on your gun, but now look at all this space that I have on the side of my face. I have a ton of clearance for my mask to move around freely and have a st still have a clean sight picture through my RMR or T1 or any kind of optic that you're running, or if you're a very spicy speed softer, no optic at all. Okay, since this is an M4, I'm assuming it has to be some kind of mayo, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, it's not even mayonnaise, it's like vegan mayonnaise. Where like, you try to convince everyone that it's mayo, but no one's gonna believe you. You know, this is the one time I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. This is not mayo. Not, not one bit. No, it's you vegan might... mayo. It's mayonnaise it's... in title only. Okay, all right. So diving deeper into the stock setup here, you might notice this little stubby boy sticking out right here. Now, this is not where you store your battery, thank God, because this thing is, you probably fit in a uh, Polar Star battery. Um, but if you actually take out this little cover, it'll reveal the MOSFET that GNG has included in this gun. Now, most of the electronic parts of this gun are the most up-to-date GNG products that they have available. So their most up-to-date MOSFET, their most up-to-date ETU, uh, their most up-to-date fuse. Um, and they smartly decided to put everything in this little compartment so that it's not taking up space inside of your buffer tube so that you have some more room for a bigger battery. As for the rest of the gun, it's pretty much a GNG Combat Machine 2.0. It's all polymer, upper and lower receiver is polymer because if you are GNG, you're probably not offering a metal body unless the gun is over $400. So thanks GNG. But I do agree with the decision to keep this guy polymer because if you are catering towards speed softers, you do want your gun to be as light as possible. So polymer was the best move and uh, just allows you to run around the, the field at full speed. Also, one feature that I did wanna mention that GNG included on this gun that big ups to you guys and I want every other airsoft manufacturer to start doing this is a functioning bolt catch. See how it locks back and exposes that rotary style hop up and then you can release it just by pressing right there. Um, good job guys. And then of course, we're gonna talk about the magazine that comes with the gun. Now. Oh. This magazine features a unique design. It's smoky but see-through. Um, so you can actually see how many BBs you have left in your magazine. It does also feature these little yellow markers that show exactly how many rounds that you have. So as you can see, there's a marker for 100, 90, 60, and 30 rounds left. So that way, if you need to quick check your mag to see how many BBs you have left, you can just look at the mag already in your gun and without having to pull it out and maybe guess the weight of how many BBs you have left. The only, only problem I have with this mag is that it only holds 105 rounds. Guys, it's 2020. There are manufacturers making 250 round mid caps now. Come on, add some more. I mean 105, it's not even 150, only 105. If you're making a gun that you want people to feather and shoot the crap out of, why would you limit us to 105? Why? Balancing the meta. Imba. I want the Imba. As for the internals, this guy is featuring g, &G standard version 2 gearbox with their most up-to-date electronics, like their MOSFET and ETU. Um, and it's pretty much similar to the ARP 556, because it might as well be the ARP 556 with updated externals. 
So just something to keep in mind, but let's be honest, if you're getting this guy, you're probably gonna DSG it anyways, so the internals are just placeholders. Now the reasoning behind why GNG probably made a model without the blade trigger was because most fields actually ban blade triggers. Most of our local fields in SoCal actually ban guns that have blade triggers. And if you're buying a gun straight out of the box that you can't even field, it's probably a good idea to release a model that doesn't feature that. So I understand why they did it, but I still wanted to try it. Now let's be honest, a blade trigger on this guy would be very similar to a paintball gun. And you may argue that, you know, feathering your trigger is cancerous in airsoft, which at times it may be. But let's be honest, there are people that are out on the field already that have shortened their trigger pull all the way up to a hair trigger and can spam their trigger faster than if this guy had a blade trigger. So, you know, fields, can you please let a blade trigger be allowed, you know? Yeah, they probably won't even be able to fire it faster than people who have it hair triggered all the way. You know, just just let us let us have some fun. Come on. The G and G SSG One chronos in at about 340 to 345 FPS using 0.2 gram BBs and shoots at around 22 RPS using an 11.1 lipo. All right, enough talk. Let's go ahead and feather this guy. Come on, let's go. I'm not going. Come on. What's going on guys? We're out here with the SSG-1. Hell is upon us. There's ash raining from the sky, but we're gonna shoot this guy just to show you the performance and uh, try not to breathe in the ash. So we have this guy tuned to about 0.25 gram BBs. We got the hop up tuned to the distance that we want. We got a man size target a little bit further and then a little, little small head size tin can a little bit closer. So we're just gonna see if we can snapshot to both and then maybe run some paintball drills because this is like a paintball style gun. So let's see how it goes. All right. Woo. First up, man size target, semi-auto. Let's do a little feathering. There we go. And I got the stock adjusted to where I needed to be at a weird 45 angle. So let's shoot it. All right, that's actually pretty tight grouping. I would say the trigger response is very familiar and very similar to the ARP9 series or the ARP556. Um, like we said before, the internals are generally the same, so the trigger response is gonna feel the same. The stock though, this is where it feels great. That angle that I can get and still look down the bore of my rifle, when I have my die mask on, this will be great for acquiring my targets. Wait, so where is your die mask? Uh, I left it at the studio, wow. so. Oh well. You're fired. There you go. Some more semi-auto. A snap from the man size to the little head. Let's see. Woo! This is nice. This is nice. I don't even need a blade trigger either. I can keep up. So far, performance-wise, this guy is pretty standard. I would say the grouping is pretty tight for something out of the box. I'd probably drop in like a tight bore if I really wanted to uh, bring this up to competition spec. But um, let's do some full auto shots and see how long we can go with this mag. Safety first. Woo. Rate of fire is actually pretty fast. Pretty decent out of the box too, but I wanna have some more fun. So we got the Lonex 250 round mags here. Let's see how much output this guy can put out. See, 250 rounds. Take notes, G and G. So for those of you who think you need a blade trigger to shoot fast, this is my blade trigger. I don't need a blade trigger on this. Here we go. And we're out already. <coughs> oh dude, the air is so dry. <coughs> what is this? Go ahead. No. Give it a try. I don't want to shoot this thing. Come on. Well, what is it? It's Just like a broken stock. Tickle it a little bit. No. Come on. I know you want to. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> Pull the trigger. Pull it. It's so awkward. I know no you stability. secretly like it. 
Go ahead, shoot the shoot the further target. Okay, trigger response is pretty good. I, I, okay, I will give it that, but the form factor is whack, bro. The form factor is yeah. so whack. He clamped that baby. Uh, okay, rate of fire is pretty good though. It's very reminiscent of my LMG, which I miss. Oh, we're out of ammo. Oh, Dang thank God we're out of ammo. Okay, I don't have to shoot this thing anymore. All right, <laughs> give it back, give it back. <laughs> the GNG SSG1 is being offered for $250 at airsoftgi.com. If you want the best savings in airsoft, be sure to take advantage of the Wombo Combo. Final thoughts on the SSG1. Do I like it? Eh, it's, it's, it's all right, you know? I personally would like to commend GNG for their innovation and stepping out of the box of what an airsoft gun should look like and perform like. Um, and if you're really trying to get into that speed soft, speaky bee competitive play style, I would say this is a great base to start with because you don't need to do all those external mods like buying an external drop stock or uh, buying an external outer barrel with taking your handguard or whatever. Um, yeah, you can just start with this gun. It's at a pretty decent price for the performance. And again, let's be honest, you're gonna DSG it anyways, so this is just a mold for you. Thank you guys so much for checking out our overview of the SSG-1. Let us know in the comments if you think fields should allow blade triggers or extended trigger guards. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to be notified of whenever we upload new videos. We are uploading every Wednesday and Friday, so be sure to be on the lookout for our latest videos. This is Kevin from Airsoft GI, and I will see you guys on the turf field. Hmm?